Coming up on 617 at KLIF, well, a fiery debate over working from home all started by a Wall Street Journal article last month. Companies like IBM and Reddit are now ending remote programs because of productivity issues. Since then, many companies have come out in diehard support of working from home. So we wonder, does working from home work? Let's ask workplace expert and author Jim Witten, Witten who joins us now. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Amy. Good to hear from you. Well, thanks for joining us. Companies like IBM say there are things workers can only get in person. Do you agree with that? Well, certainly that that's true. That doesn't mean that telecommuting should be eliminated, but uh, as a statement, it's true. It's interesting, American Express, so the big companies are looking into this, and, and they discovered that the top thing their managers want in their employees is the ability to prioritize, to have a positive attitude, and be a team player. But those all require soft skills. And so the survey goes on to say that 60% of managers prefer face-to-face communications. So I think that's what's kind of driving this with some companies. We've tried the telecommuting. We're not getting the kind of uh, involvement that we want, and so we want to cut back on that. But it's interesting, as you mentioned, that there's also a backlash in other companies that say, no, we're going to continue to do this. Backlash is the word I was going to use in asking this next question, but I was about to say, is uh, are, are we finding more resistance to uh, working from home now because of of the advent of uh, social media and our ability to text and tweet and do in every other way imaginable be uh, be in contact with people without having that face to face contact? Well, and of course, those things uh, they can be monitored, uh, you know, through their company computer, that kind of thing. Uh, but you know, nothing nothing replaces face to face. At at the old school advantage, we developed a, a scale of connectedness. So to understand it easily, at the bottom of that is a text message that you're, in other words, you're connecting with somebody the least. With that, it's kind of like a walkie talkie of our day. And then at the top of that scale, you'd see face-to-face because you've got all the interaction, the tone, the real-time interaction, the facial expressions, those types of things. Um, But soft skills uh, are are really needed, and they need to be off the charts in three particular areas. So in other words, if you're going to allow somebody to telecommute, they need to have uh, an incredible command of the English language. They need to be able to to, uh, expert questioning uh, ability, and they need to be able to tell stories because stories are so efficient in communication. In other words, if you're not there in person, what are the things that, you know, it's almost like, unfortunately, if someone can't see, they're blind, their hearing is incredible or vice versa. If they can't hear, uh, then their other senses take over. And so it's kind of the same thing. If you can't be there face to face, then in these areas of conversation and questioning, Uh, And storytelling, you need to be an absolute master at those things. We're talking with workplace expert and author Jim Whitten about a trend for big companies now to end their remote programs, their telecommuting programs. All right, so you're an employee who currently telecommutes, and then your boss says, I'm sorry, you now have to come in. Uh, What can you say to that boss to try to convince him or her that working from home is, is still productive and good? Well, the first thing I mentioned being a good uh, asker of questions, you, you would want to ask the question, can you tell me more about that? What do you mean by that? Or how did you come to that conclusion? Because a lot of times people are simply taking directives from, from above when your boss tells you that. Uh, but you have a right, if, if they're going to change your lifestyle to that degree, you certainly have a right to know what the reasoning is behind it. And oftentimes when you ask those simple questions, what do you mean by that? Or how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, there won't be an answer to follow through with that. So then you can get into a discussion and, and perhaps even you know, save some of that uh, coveted time at home that you feel like you're being efficient, and maybe it's just company policy that is driving that. And so you know, companies make exceptions for superstar uh, employees. So now if your production has gone down and they present you with that information, uh, then you're, you'll have to deal with it that, at that time. You'll have to decide to take another position elsewhere or to, or to say, okay, I'll, I'll come in for a while and, and let's see if that improves things. 
I would guess that in order to be productive at home, uh, it not only it not only requires uh, some special skills of particular people. I mean, you know, everybody's different. Whether or not you're going to have be have, be distracted, or if you're going to be able to actually buckle down and get as much accomplished as you would in the uh, in the office, but it also uh, would be greatly dependent on the type of work you do, wouldn't it? No question. And that's a great point. And uh, to that point, I, I just read in the last few days an article, uh, I believe it was through Forbes, where they listed 15 high paying telecommuting jobs. And I tell you, I mean, I, I do this all the time with companies across the country, uh, but it was interesting to see some of the high paying jobs. I mean, we're talking 75000 up to $250,000. A lot of them, interestingly, were project managers. So I suppose you could have people in the field and you're kind of in uh, headquarters at your home monitoring things that are happening and you might have to go out, you know, a day or two a week to check on things. But uh, it, it's very possible and you'd be surprised at, at how good the jobs are that would allow you to. Uh, telecommute. So, um, you know, it, it really is, you, you can't make a blanket statement. You can't say telecommuting is bad or you can't say uh, it works great. It really depends on the position, the philosophy of the company, and quite frankly, the abilities of the individual. What's the trend that you're seeing? I know what we, we heard about in the article, but you consult with a lot of companies across the country. So what are those companies saying to you about telecommuting? You know, I, I feel like it's kind of in a state of flux. They've tried it for quite a while, uh, the telecommuting, and the technology is so fantastic that it's allowed that to happen. But they are beginning to understand that nothing replaces the human being in terms of uh, being there, connecting the face-to-face uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and so I, I think we're, we're kind of in a period where they're trying to decide. They're trying to say how much of this can be telecommuting, can we have full-time employees doing that, or does everybody get to do that a little bit? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, and it's tough for the CEO, obviously, or the C-level employees to do that. But uh, beyond that, you know, what is our policy going to be? So I'd say we're in a period of time where we're really trying to decide as a, as a corporate nation to say what – what direction do we want to go? It's going yep. to be a very interesting. It's got to be, and so so must your book, uh, The Old School Advantage, Timeless Tools for Every Generation. You can see the book and see Jim at uh, theoldschooladvantage.com. Mr. Wooden, thank you very much for Thanks, your time Jim. this morning. It's my pleasure. Have All a great day. Right.